What's up guys, this is Joey Wisdom and this is my friend Paolo and today we are going to do a video about spina bifida because it is spina bifida awareness month, October and we're just going to talk about a little bit of uh, spina bifida I've known Paolo for 10 years now and he's one of my closest friends and one of the reasons why we're close is because we can relate with spina bifida I'm 29 you're 29. 29. You're, I think you're a little bit. Yeah, I'm in February. Yeah, he's a little bit older. We actually met in college, in the beginning of college, a long time ago. Basically, we had like the same math class, which is funny because we both hate math. <laughs> and we had a first weird encounter. We did. We actually did. Uh, do you remember? In the elevator? Oh, yeah, the elevator. I, I saw him in the elevator and I kind of like recognized like the, the scar. And so I have the scar too, but you can't really see it because I have a bunch of hair. So I asked him if he was born with SB. Why did I ask? I don't know. I know it's kind of like rude, but I think it kind of just like... I answered yes with, with a dirty look in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't have asked, but I think I already knew. So I was like, hmm, he could be my friend. <laughs> Let's just ask him and be nosy. No, so um, I was born with spina bifida hydrocephalus. If you, go, if you guys don't know, spina bifida, do you want to describe spina bifida? Um, there's different levels to it. It affects everybody differently. She can walk, I can't. So that's pretty much the tube right there. My, um, it's S, oh man, it's L1, lumbar 1, and S2. What does S mean again? Is it sacrum? Sacrum, probably. I don't know. But it's really low. My, my... Um, basically, you're born with an undeveloped spine, so the leftover nerves are popped out of your spine, at least for me, and so they cut those nerves and it affects your nervous system. And so, since my surgery was pretty low, it didn't really affect me. The only things that affected were my calves, my, well, basically my, my knees down, and then I have like a hip higher than the other one by like an inch and a half and affects little things here and there like your eyes too like I have a lazy eye you I had a lazy eye have a la I still have lazy eyes but I, but I can still control it with like my glasses so it's the only way I can really I control. fixed it with LASIK yeah so he fixed it so it's like little things here and there um, I'm missing calf muscles because I don't have the proper tendons to work them out I use a walker to walk with braces. Um, I use like braces as well. Um, and I usually get them changed like every five years to have a uh, better balance. And I also was born uh, with, well, supposedly uh, because of the fluid that goes in your spine, it goes up to your brain. So the doctors weren't really sure if I needed a shunt, a VP shunt, which a VP shunt is actually the fluid they put it in your brain and down to your abdomen so that the fluid can like... You can urinate it out. Urinate it out, yeah. So, I mean, I, I still have the same VP shunt that they put like 10 days after I was born. Which is crazy because that's something you really don't hear about. Right, because I had mine changed like four times, but the last time was when I was 23. And hopefully that will be the last time forever. Yes, hopefully. And that's the thing, um, when it comes to VP shunts, like some parts of the shunt get gets clogged up so that's why sometimes you have to get certain parts changed fortunately i haven't had that issue um, i remember a nurse that told me that there was a guy she knew who was 30 and he had to get it changed because it was like up for him and so she basically said it will probably happen to you and i was like oh thanks appreciate it <laughs> yeah I mean, the thing about spina bifida is that a lot of people don't know about it. I think, um, I mean, yeah, there's a month for us, but it's really not promoted as much as I would like for it to be promoted. Like, I think you know more about like autism, um, breast cancer, breast which is also cancer, this muscular dystrophy, mental illness, there you go, that's still correct. and just a bunch of other things, and they have like marathons and stuff like that for different people um, so I want people to be more aware of it uh, because I think 
people should learn about it. And I feel like people just make assumptions about us sometimes. Like they just assume that, for example, if they see me limping a little bit, they think that I broke an ankle. Maybe just because he's in a wheelchair, they probably think he got in a car accident or something. Right. And so there's a lot of ignorance based on um, what people think. Us growing up was pretty hard, but I think at this point, it's something that we're used to. Pretty fucking proud of it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically, I mean, I'm open to people asking me questions, but it just depends on the way you ask them, you know, especially strangers. I mean, you can't come up to people and be like, hey, what's wrong with you? You're gonna be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know? Well, we're both pretty highly educated people, so it doesn't really affect our learning. When it does, but it doesn't stop us from achieving. That's true, that's true. I mean, the thing about spina bifida, um, I'm not sure if the VP shunt or the liquid in our brain affects us. I'm not too sure. But I know that I'm pretty dyslexic. I reverse everything when it comes to numbers or things I see. I'm a, a, I'm a very visual learner. Um, that's how I learn things. There's no really no other way that I can learn things. Like I cannot learn things pattern-wise. I have no number sense. And it's pretty hard to kind of ignore it or accept it in a way because I think that the most times that I have a problem with that is maybe school or work, mostly work. But um, other than that, there are um, learning disabilities, but I mean, I don't let it stop me because I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a film student and I'm pretty creative. And I always have different ways of trying to figure things out. And then also like driving, I drive, but um, people- Left foot. <laughs> no, I drive with my right foot. Left foot, you drive too fast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do speed. With her heel. Yeah, I drive with my heel. And I mean, there's nothing really that can stop me from driving. I mean, in the beginning, um, I got my license when I was like 19 and I was pretty scared. I think my mom was the one that would scare me the most. Yeah, that's what they do. Try to discourage and scare. Parents um, with kids born with spina bifida are really overprotecting, that's the thing. And so I think I would rebel with that. And so now at this point, I kind of just like to do whatever the hell I want to do. And I just follow her. <laughs> he follows the lead, I'm the bad influence. But no, I mean, I think we should always do what we want to do and do what makes us happy. And I think people have this misconception of uh, that we can't do certain things, like, you know, things like athletic-wise. And I think that if you really put your mind into doing something, you're going to do it. So, I mean, he graduated from college. Bachelor's. Bachelor's. I'm still trying to finish. Um, but, I mean, you know, he, he made it. And what, what's your major? Um, criminal justice and journalism. Yes. So he's on that. I think everyone has their own path. And I feel like the society tells us that we should finish something or do something at a certain time and a certain pace. And it just, I don't believe in that. Honestly. We're proof that that doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, education is really important. And um, as long as you're doing something that makes you happy, then, you know, why not? I do use leg braces. He uses. Yeah, I do. He uses like braces. AFOs and KFOs. AFOs are short braces and KFOs are long braces that go all the way up to the hip. The hip. I had those when I was little. Which are the ones that I use because I have a prior injury on my knee. Mm -hmm. So I use the lower ones and that's for support balance. That's it. But I don't use them at home. I take them off at home because I mean, I'm at home. I don't really need it um, to like short walking distance. Um, but I do need my braces for everything else, like work, school, long walks, and stuff like that. Um, I just use mine for therapy because I like to sit more, because mm -hmm. walking is overrated, I think. Yep, I remember him saying that 10 years ago. <laughs> walking is overrated. Hi. So something important that I wanted to talk about is, like I've met a few people here in Miami, like we basically went to the same doctors growing up, um, not 
like we know about the same doctors and there's other um, people that are adults that are a our age that um, I kind of grew up with and, and that he knows about and the thing is that um, it's been hard trying to like stay friends with certain uh, with 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 some of them because I feel like some some of the adults now make SB their world and I, I, I personally don't agree with it. I don't agree with it either. That's part of the reason why we made this video, to just eliminate that stigma. Yeah, there's a lot of stigma. Um, I mean, I, I see, for example, like there are certain people that do have a disability and they make it their world, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's like some type of addiction that shouldn't exist. I mean, yeah, you have a disability, but why? do you just keep talking about it or telling the world? I mean, there is a way of telling the world, you know, by making people aware, but not to the point where you just like annoy everyone with your problem. You know, I, I, I feel like if I was to talk about it so much, I would even annoy myself. Exactly. Very much so. Um, so we've known a couple of people that just make excuses of why they can't do certain things and they just blame it all on spina bifida. And I don't agree with that. Because imagine, like I put myself in there, she was like, maybe when I was younger, I would make excuses of, you know, being in pain or I can't do this because of this. But imagine if I have that mentality now, like I did before, I would not enjoy my life as much as I'm We would not have gotten as far as, it, as we did if we did that. We went that path. Yeah. So definitely not. Um, I think that I think when you have a disability, you should be like, yeah, I have it, but you shouldn't let it stop you from going out, for going to social events, um, from just meeting people because you don't know who you're gonna meet, and and you know I think life is about having fun, being who you are, accepting yourself for who you are, and you know. You never know what good people are going to meet out there, and you can teach people something, you know? Like, yeah, it's hard to open up. Me, personally, if you know me, <laughs> you know it's hard for me to open up. But, I mean, if people ask, like, I'd, I'd answer and tell you how I feel about the disability. So, yeah, never let your disability control you. Like, I understand if, if, if you're like one of those people, like, no, but you don't understand. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> I fully understand because I've gone through so much. He's gone through a lot. Or the hospital was like our second home. Yes. Growing up, and we went through a lot of surgeries. We've seen too many doctors. I think that's why I don't like that much of attention from people because of all these doctors that would just stare at us all the time growing up. I don't know. We got enough about it. Right. In our childhood. Yeah, too many childhood just go away <laughs> situations. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I think it, it comes to a point now, it came to a point where like if we ever have pain, like we know what it is, even before going to a doctor now. Right, yeah. We diagnose each other. We do, because there have been certain times that I go to the ER and I'm like, no, it's this and the the doctor's like, No, it's that and I'm like, No, because I know how that pain feels like, it's the other thing. And then at the end of the day, they go find a specialist, and guess who's right? I'm right. The pseudo doctor, not the real doctor. <laughs> so I think that, um, I mean, yeah, doctors help, but I believe personally that doctors don't help you heal. They just give you a medicine to break the pain away, but you're not necessarily healing. So. At the end of the day, I'm trying to heal myself um, every single day, and I'm trying to just like stay away from the hospital at this point of my life. I embrace it. I go there two or three times a week. <laughs> a thousand times a year. A thousand times a year. I'm I'm pretty bad. I I just go like once a year. I think I've had it. I'm good. I like contributing to their salary. I guess. <laughs> it's okay. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, write it in the, um, tell me what you think, 
Um, we'll probably do a follow-up video about this. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Be good. And uh, bye, guys. Bye.